Hello, hello! Now we have the latest new chapter of Boku no Hero Academia. With this, we are caught up on one of the four series that I want to get caught up on. It's a start. Uh, here we see that Shigaraki Tomura is actually kind of rattled by Mirio just being like, Oh yeah, you don't have any friends, do you? <laughs> that's, that's why you're being so emo and destructive, because you just don't know what's up. And... Uh, <clears throat> Here we see a flashback to his childhood before his quirk fully ma manifested when he was just a really lonely, unhappy, unfortunate kid with a horrible skin condition. Uh, and here in the present, thinking back to this, thinking back to this horribly oppressive, terrifying image of just endless hands cascading down and clutching him, he thinks, I do have friends. Just an odd takeaway <laughs> from <clears throat> such a painful memory. <sighs> Whoa. Oh, man. Whoa, man. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That's kind of embarrassing. I like this, though. I like that there's a moment of comedy for the first time in, in many chapters. Um, that there's... Not just comedy, though, but, like, a really kind of sad and painful moment of comedy. Mirio apologizes. This outburst is so painful. And it really reinforces this idea that in the end, like, it's not having a coherent ideology that makes you strong. It's not, you know, uh, having, like, a, a well-justified understanding of the world that actually motivates you to do great and terrible things it's just power it's the fact that Tomura has the sheer level of power to do this and it's almost <clears throat> the fact that he's totally nihilistic and understands so little and has such a limited worldview that enables him to commit such atrocities but in the end he's just like a kid he's He's literally just like a teenager, right? Like, <laughs> he's not that much older than Mirio, probably. I've got friends. Did I hit a nerd? Touch on a delicate hobby? I feel bad. Uh, do you feel bad? Really? Come on, man. <laughs> this this is good. This core body is way tougher than tentacles. There's no comparison. Can you scratch his shin skin so he might be in trouble there? Hmm. Okay, so... This we had never really understood, is to what extent is All for One now kind of in control of Tomura's mind and body? We know that he, he tried to like take over in the past, but Tomura managed to fight it off um, to an extent, but then had still sort of like poisoned his mind and, and was preparing to inherit his body fully. Uh, but at the same time, the, the real All for One is, you know, an entity in and of itself with a personality and a consciousness out there fighting Endeavor and Hawks and stuff. So it's not really clear what's going on here, and, and I don't think this is going to necessarily uh, answer any questions, but it's it's showing that even to the, the two people involved, it's getting confusing. <laughs> so I thought, it seems like there's a component that hasn't quite melded. Neither Tomura nor All for One. Ooh... His childhood self, perhaps. It's it's the long, long buried, long repressed version of himself from before he met All for One, when he was crying about accidentally killing his dog and his family, and a personality that's worlds apart from what he's been left with. That entity covered in hands, being clutched, not the hands themselves or the person controlling the hands but that which is grabbed and held. Hmm. I thought I felt him hesitate back there. I don't think he's wrong. I think Mirio's psychological gambit here could really pay off. I don't know to what end. It's not like Shigaraki Tomura is going to lose this fight. It's not like we're going to be uh, spared his final eventful showdown with Midoriya. But... <clears throat> I don't know. Or could he actually in the end become an ally against All for One? Not Shigaraki Tomura, but Shimura, the 
little baby inside, the little kid, still crying inside. Untouchable, I can get into his actual body and buy time. Can't stall on him unless there's a solid attack worth waiting for. That's why buying that time for you. Yes, Sun Eater, my boy. <laughs> I want to see what his like alt is. Before it was that he ate swordfish and that gave him a sword arm and that was like super strong because he actually understood sword fighting and stuff. <laughs> um, which was awesome because, you know, it was kind of like a, a technique. It wasn't just raw strength, but something that he could specialize in. Um, and I, I, I hope to see something similar. I don't know what it could be, though. What are some other, like, powerful foods? <laughs> okay, best genus. They did take that attack that was as strong as All Might. It's constructed solely to defeat you. People built a tomb for yourselves. Hmm. And here we get a, a flashback to the big three in their youth, in their first year of the Hero Academy, perhaps. Then you asked me that. Which hero are you a fan of? I got to learn so much about you two here, and now I'm all the stronger for it. We know the true worth of this vast hybrid. Takes time to cook up properly. What is he gonna eat? What's he eating? I gotta, and I know all about you, Tanaki. I'm a cheeky. He ate a lot. <laughs> it's a quirk with no upper cap. Zebra tarantula, ew. Dragon fruit? Dragonfruit's like spiky, but it's not actually solid spikes. They're like kind of flappy, fleshy spikes. <laughs> Spider crab, delicious. Deer, get some antlers in there maybe. Chestnut, yeah, chestnut makes sense. Chestnut is actually incredibly hard and spiny uh, when it's uh, not ripe yet, when it's still in its green form. It can really hurt you. Uh, what else we got? American alligator, mussel? I don't know about mussel. I guess some species of shellfish can snap shut like that. <laughs> uh, a lot of other stuff I can't really read. Peanut? Something peanut? Green sea turtle? Oh, bro, that's endangered. You can't eat that. <laughs> that's, that's unethical. <laughs> this is amazing. He's completely unrecognizable. All It's not just his body that's transformed. Like, it's not his limbs that transformed this time, but his entire body transformed into this terrifying hybrid animal it's just what <laughs> oh my gosh there's even more this is such a short chapter but i don't even care because it's my boy sun eater we can see his face as if oh okay i totally misunderstood what i was looking at this this i parsed this <laughs> as if it was almost like a magic card of like legendary creature beast mutants or something I thought this grass in the foreground was like really foregrounded. I think it's because of the way they do the fading. I thought this was like a huge kaiju type monster that he transformed into. And that we were seeing it like from this perspective, from like a distance and the grass was foregrounded and close and in the way and then almost fogged by distance, lurking through the mists was this gigantic beast. But instead, it is his limb still transforming. It's his limb turning into all of this. Urchin, another shop cell turtle. He can't be eating turtles, bro. I think some turtles are okay to eat, but the sea turtles, the shop cell turtles, those are so endangered. <laughs> That's bad. Jackfruit, too. Jackfruit is spiny as shit. And then infused with her energy, I think enabled to turn this into kind of like a beam attack. So he's got like a cannon, okay? It's not the sort of, like, technique-enabled type thing, like when he ate the swordfish that I was excited for, but this is very, very awesome in its own way. Just the way this is drawn is so unlike anything else in the series. I love it. Okay, uh, we're caught up. Hooray, hooray. It's a week until the next chapter. Let's look forward to it. Um, 
Yeah, I really like seeing the big three fight. I always like them as characters, uh, Sun Eater especially. I'm excited to see if this attack is actually enough to do anything. It's, it's a tough situation they're in, because not just in terms of meta understanding of the plot, but in terms of just what the characters know, it's hopeless. They're not actually going to be able to defeat Tomura. All they can do is try to keep themselves alive and keep him contained within this floating island until Deku gets there. Um, and we haven't checked in with Deku in, like, months. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's pretty scary. Dude is strong, but uh, we're going to find out. All right, let's look forward to the next chapter. Bye-bye.